up guys, I'm KBHD here, and the car that I'm driving right now is called the Tesla Model Y Performance. And this car, I was gonna do like a whole big review of it, but since I've already done an autofocus on the Model 3, I think we can keep this one pretty simple. So this car, it looks like a Model 3 from many angles, especially when you're outside. From the front, you look at it just like a Model 3, same front end, same headlights, same idea. But as soon as you see it from the side, then you get like a little more of that profile. You start to see how much more headroom there is, how much more of that DNA from the Model X is coming in. So it fits right into the family. And I think it's good as far as electric cars go that it does look pretty familiar. And then you start to see some of the bigger differences. So on the Model 3 where there was chrome everywhere, every single Model Y has a matte black trim around the windows and the mirrors and the door handles all matte black trim, which is sweet. I happen to think it looks pretty dope. And also, I don't know if you can tell on that back window, every single Model Y I've seen on the road has tinted back windows. And this one came with tinted back windows. I think from the factory, they're tinting the back windows and rear window of every Model Y. I don't think Model S or Model X or Model 3 do that, but I also think that looks pretty good. And then inside, it's got this huge amount of uninterrupted glass for the roof right from the front seats all the way to behind the back seats. It's perfect for visibility or just stargazing or whatever you end up being into. But the point is visibility from pretty much every angle except rear is pretty good. I think when you look straight back from this car, the tailgate comes up kind of high and then that roof line goes down pretty low. So the rear is a little bit tight, but other than that, you can see everything. Oh, and also speaking of the tailgate, this car also has a power lift gate, unlike Model 3. All right, Doug DeMuro style, we have a quirk slash feature. The power lift gate trunk has a memory just like Model S and Model X. So typically, when you open that power lift gate from either in the car or outside, it opens all the way. This is the max height. This is great, but maybe you don't wanna reach up this high every time or you have a low garage. So you can bring this down a little bit, maybe halfway, and then hold that button for three seconds. You hear a little chime. So now every time you open the trunk from here on out, that'll be the memorized height. So if you ever go back into your garage or that low space again, it won't ever open past the memorized height. So if I did it right, it should stop about halfway. There you go. So Model Y, because of this tailgate, has a lot more uninterrupted storage too, thanks to being a hatchback. So without even putting the seats down, thanks to no transmission and no gas tank, you already have a ton of space in here and it's nicely separated too. And then putting the seats down gets you like eight feet of uninterrupted space to the point where I've seen people put a bed in the back of the car here like this and camp in it. And the seats power fold by the way. So the switches are on the left side of the trunk, you flip them and it folds right down. I think really though, there's two main things that you think as you're sitting in the driver's seat driving a Model Y. Number one is that you're just higher off the ground than a Model 3 of course. And then number two is everything else is just like a Model 3. So the being higher off the ground part, I think there's some upside and some downside to that. A lot of people like the utility of being higher off the ground. You obviously have more road clearance, you have more visibility, and you just generally feel safer when you feel like you can see more. I can see like right over the nose of this car pretty easily. Uh, so being higher off the ground is nice. Literally it's the same seats as Model 3, but on risers. It's easier to get in and out of the car. All that is real, but the downside if you care about like the sportiness or the feel of the drive is yeah, you are further from the road. So you feel a little less connected to the road. I'm not like a, I'm not a car reviewer. I'm not about, I'm not gonna go top gear on you is what I'm trying to say. Um, talking about driving dynamics and all that sort of thing. But pretty clearly when you're further from the road, you feel a little bit less sporty, but that's not to take away from the performance of this car. This car feels nimble, agile, same, steering wheel, same turning radius, all the sport settings on this car feels really nice. Half of my driving around roads like this is like swerving around potholes. Roads are pretty rough in the Northeast all the time. And the ride quality in the Performance Model Y, it's actually kind of harsh sometimes. I feel like with the coil suspension, which is the same as the Model 3, and then also with these big 21 inch wheels, it's not as forgiving. Now, if you get the non-performance version, you can get it with smaller wheels. It'll still have the coil suspension, but it'll feel a little more forgiving. But honestly, anytime you're driving an electric car 
with all the torque you get right away, it's always going to feel really fast. So then, uh, when I say it feels just like a Model 3, uh, that's not really that surprising because this car shares like 75% of its parts with the Model 3 inside and out. It almost is a Model 3. The interior is of course almost exactly the same and it's this like staggeringly minimal look. It's a super clean look to it of course and there's also literally no buttons anywhere in the car except the door handles, the steering wheel, and the hazard button, which I think is one of the buttons legally required to be in the car. So everything else is on the single center screen, like everything else. So that's the speedometer, the navigation, everything. And you know, I've now that I've had this car for, it's almost been two weeks actually, I've gotten used to a lot of it, but some of it I still kind of wish actually was just a regular button. Like, I don't know, there's just so many little things that were just used to being buttons, like the windshield wipers are on the touchscreen. Anytime you want to change their speed, that's where you'll find the controls. The glove box, there's no button for that. Even next to the glove box itself, you have to get to that through the center screen. And even, even the air conditioner vents, like if you just want to reach up and adjust the air to make it point at your face or something, you can't even do that. You have to do that on the screen. Now it is a super cool futuristic looking UI where you have all this directing the air wherever you want, but still sometimes I just wanna just, I just wanna just put the, put the air on my face like with one little, so I don't, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff happening on the screen and it's all super cool, but at the same time I kinda wish I had a little bit more manual control. The key, this is the key, it's a, it's a card key. You can also connect your app, but this is the key. And when you get in the Model Y, it tells you to put your foot on the brake and put the key right here next to the armrest, which is this very glossy, <laughs> slippery surface. There's no magnets or anything. And so as soon as you drive away, or if you accelerate kind of hard, which you might in an electric car, or brake kind of hard, or do anything that's not a straight line, it just slides off and falls into the seat or on the floor. And that's not very elegant. So I understand most people will just use the app on your phone because you got a car that can do that. You'll use the app. But I kind of wish there was like a dedicated place that could just hold the key and not have it slide all over the place. It would feel a little more, a little more, uh, not professional. What's the word? Refined. I talk about a lot of this stuff in the Model 3 autofocus episode about how this is a high tech car with all the autopilot and computer vision and software updates and supercharging and all that stuff. And also did a second video about how Teslas improve over time. So I'll link both of those videos below the like button if you wanna check them out. But I think the main focus for Tesla right now is manufacturing and quality control. Those two, those are the two main concerns starting a long time ago, but especially with Model Y. So at the time of me recording this, this fully loaded spec Model Y I'm driving with autopilot costs about $70,000. And that's that's still an expensive car, so they haven't started making all the cheaper versions yet. And so for that price, even if you're not the most picky person about that type of stuff, which I'm not actually, you still want things to be built well. And even in this Model Y that Tesla gave me, I found it has some pretty big panel gaps. The one back left over the trunk is pretty serious, potentially letting like water into the car and I think causing more wind noise. Uh, the sun visor on the passenger side is pretty loose, like it could just fall off if you pull too hard. The hazard button up top is a little bit indented and just not quite aligned right. And the front trunk lip isn't quite even all the way around and you kind of notice it after you look at it for too long. And this is the one Tesla gave me. So you know people who are obviously not getting a review unit that can be looked over five or six times before it's shipped off to be in front of a high-res camera, you know people are gonna also have some of the same issues, potentially more issues, as we're still in this early stage of manufacturing. Now, like I said, I'm personally not actually very picky about things like panel gaps. Like, I like high-quality materials, but generally I'm someone who's more focused on when I'm driving, the actual driving experience. So I'm paying attention to the handling, the way the car feels when you're steering, the, the zero to 60. And for all of those fundamentals and all the extra high tech stuff like autopilot, this car crushes it. It just does. Maybe it's kind of like a smartphone review where 
I can only I can only tell you so much about the phone that you're definitely going to get. Like I can tell you about the hardware and the performance and typically how it works. But a lot of the little stuff like that can be tweaked and fixed with software updates. You can expect to be probably different from the phone that I'm reviewing before it comes out. And that's kind of the same thing here with a Tesla. They change so much stuff over time that, you know, all the fundamentals, the driving, the acceleration, the autopilot, the features, the minimal interior, all that is still going to be the same about anyone who orders a Model Y. But a lot of the smaller stuff, like the fit and finish, and a lot of the little things like the seats and the little software features may very well change by the time someone else gets their Model Y. But as far as that stuff that I pay attention to that matters, I'm a big fan of this car.